Most of us know what the hero's journey or the monomyth is, even if you think you don't. It's the idea that all the myths in human history can be simplified down into one common form. The concept was invented and popularized by writer and professor Joseph Campbell in his book Hero with a Thousand Faces from 1949. You've probably seen this. Did you read that book? Uh, I read parts of it, yeah. Okay, me too. It's handy little. Hashtag me Did too. you really? Of course. Oh, okay. Look, I've Wait, read every You mean book. in the past or you meant for this video? No, in the past. Oh, yeah. okay. I've read pretty much every single book there is on writing or screenwriting you could think of. Really? Of course, yeah. Okay, let's look I've at even, this guy. I've even memorized some of um, Story by Robert McKee. Mm -hmm. And also, I like Save the Cat a lot, the book by... Right. Uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name, but Save the Cat is a great book little diagram in an English or screenwriting class, the hero starts at home, crosses the threshold into a larger, strange world, faces trials, and is transformed, eventually returning home a changed person. For example, Star Wars. So this is not good if you're, if you're trying to make a, a video mm -hmm. debunking the hero's journey. It's pretty bad, in my opinion, to start off by saying, here are like two of the most classic movies ever made and how they perfectly conform to the hero's journey. Right. Yeah, exactly. Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. This really undercuts her argument, but... I don't know. Yes. Of course, one of the most influential films of all time was literally written by George Lucas with the hero's journey in mind. Cheater. <laughs> What? You know, what? I was gonna, I was going to make fun of her for randomly playing on a musical instrument, and then now I realize I can't. <laughs> now I realize I can't. Adam. I gotta learn Star it's Wars. It's all your fault, okay? I gotta learn Star Wars on the harmonica. That'd be pretty badass. Listen, she's nerdy and cool. She has an orcarina, okay? It looks like a Zelda property orcarina that she's playing the Star Wars theme for literally no reason, but it's random. It's good. It's random. I like it. Okay. God, you know, you're this, just... this doesn't have to all be hate, Sitch, okay? Let the hate this flow is a message. You, Adam. <laughs> this is a Feel message. Feel the hate and anger. It gives you power. Maggie, yes. keep, you, you do you, girl. You keep playing. Adam, you're married. You need to stop simping, okay? I'm not simping, okay? I'm just <laughs> saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying one <laughs> artist to another here. Look. You you do you you keep it original. Mm. I don't know even know what that instrument is. It's an ocarina. Okay, I'm gonna get one of those. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't have a harp. It's become the gold standard ha, for how, ha, ha, oh. how to tell the story of a hero. Campbell read thousands of myths from all over the world, all whoa, different whoa, whoa, time whoa, periods. Whoa, whoa. What was going on in that one myth? Did you Wait, catch yeah, it? There was one picture. It's become the gold standard for They're how like to tell the story of a hero. Campbell read thousands of myths from all that one. They're just like, what is happening? <laughs> is, is that one guy getting it from behind? Well, no, it looks like one guy is riding on top of him. Oh, okay, you're right. Yeah. The other guy is kicking him while DJing on a microphone. I don't know why is a microphone because I'm assuming this is an old picture. <laughs> That's Look pretty that. crazy. Wait, another guy's smoking a cigarette. What the hell is this picture? I'm super curious now. What is happening? Like, what myth is this picture from? The if you know, let me know. Power of Myth, chat. Episode 7. Masks yes. of the It's eternity. on the chat. If you know what this is from, let me know. It's from PBS. It says right no, there. No, no, no. But no, the pic, Adam, the picture, not the fucking. Well, like, what like ancient on. culture made this picture? What is this oh, a okay. myth of? Someone photoshopped that cigarette in, though. Gosh. Obviously, they didn't have those. All different time periods and argued that all of them, that's right, all of them, can be boiled down into this series of steps. Well, that seems a little reductive, you might think. And to that, I would say, who are you talking to? Me explaining Joseph Campbell's theory or Joseph Campbell's theory? Because the answer to your question is yes. In his book on the monument. Okay, is it reductive say the patriarchy is responsible for everything yes that is reductive. Well, yes i mean you know what that's hilarious it's funny to complain about being reductive when literally well here's what's interesting 
So she's going to complain that essentially all Joseph Campbell did was look at a bunch of stories and sort of like backwards um, create a framework that they all exist from. Which, first of all, there's nothing inherently wrong with doing that. But then secondly, if she's like a woke feminist, that's literally their job is to shove everything through the lens of woke feminism. Which is like reductive, it, yeah. Right, and to reduce everything to that level. And so it's hilarious to then complain about someone else being reductive. Of course, the whole idea behind any lens is to be somewhat reductive. The question is... Is it useful? Does it yeah. tell you something useful? Yeah. Yeah. When you strip away all these other factors and you look at this one factor, do you see a mm -hmm. pattern? Right. Well, yeah. and I would say if you... Well, this is why this video is so bizarre to me. If you take like all of storytelling that's existed for thousands of years and you start to see that there's similarities in like 90% of the stories... And then you construct a framework around the simula similarities. That's a useful thing to know. Yeah. Like, why is that bad? What is the problem with doing that? Not only that, when you consider every story goes through this evolutionary process of just making it to the present, because, you know, there are thousands of stories written every year. Not all of them make it to the present. So yes. finding the the similarity between all the ones that make it to the present, I think is useful, obviously. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Yeah. Totally. But it's, it's bad somehow. Myth. Campbell describes the hero as... The man or woman who has been able to battle past... Hey, look. It's Big is. Joel. I recognize that voice. Big Joel, friend of the channel. Oh, yeah, definitely. Xander Hall. Given local historical limitations to the generally valid, normally human forms, his visions, ideas, and inspirations come pristine from the primary springs of human life and thought. Hence, they are eloquent, not of the present disintegrating society and psyche, but of the unquenched source through which society is born. He is an eternal man perfected, unspecific, universal man. He has been reborn. Okay. Damn it. Mm -hmm. So this thing here. Yeah. They are eloquent, not of the present disintegrating society and psyche. That mm -hmm. seems, um, <laughs> doesn't that seem kind of biased to you? In what way? Well, Joseph Campbell's making a declaration that present day society is disintegrating. Yeah, I don't know. Is that what I didn't understand exactly what he means by disintegrating society and psyche? Well, I thought he's distinguishing between these heroes with a thousand faces and present society being. Hence, they are eloquent, not of the present. Uh, the heroes are eloquent, yeah, not of the right. present disintegrating society and psyche, but of the unquenched source through which society is reborn. Are you saying that Joseph Campbell is a neo-reactionary? It reads a little <laughs> bit neo-reactionary to me, not going to lie. I mean, that's a huge declaration to make. Some people think that society is actually getting better. Right. So Campbell was a very big into like Jungian archetypes. Yeah. And so that's where I think this idea comes from, that there's like this collective consciousness, this, you know, the unquenched source that everyone's kind of drawing inspiration from and ideas from. And that's where like the hero's journey to him, I assume he would say comes from these, you know, the collective unconsciousness, these Jungian archetypes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's more what he's saying. Not that he's necessarily saying that, like we need to go back to being, you know, Romans a thousand years ago. Well, I, I do think society <laughs> goes through ebbs and flows where they like right. heroes and then they like anti-heroes. They just, right kind of oscillate back and forth obviously is joker a hero or an anti-hero no yeah he's a, i don't even know if he's an anti-hero he's like a a dreg mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like someone you just feel bad for is uh alex delarge from clockwork orange a hero or an anti-hero anti he's a villain right yeah wait what is the official definition of anti-hero I'm not sure. You could look it up on Urban Dictionary. A central character <laughs> story that lacks conventional heroic attributes. Oh, if that's all it means, then yes. I thought it meant something a little bit more specific than that. I don't know the name of the character in Nightcrawler, but that guy's definitely an anti-hero. Mm -hmm. But we can be interested, fascinated, 
and be watching. I mean, obviously we're interested in stories for different reasons. There's like, you know what dramatic irony is? Sure. So if uh, generally dramatic irony is like the, the audience has a piece of information that the characters in the story don't have. Mm -hmm. So we're watching from a very different perspective. We're watching knowing oftentimes, you know, they'll set up something where a character dies in the beginning and then we see how they got there. So we kind of know like, oh, this character's fucked. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which gives you a completely different viewing experience. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can tell a story, which spoilers, jeez. Why well, didn't I mean think of how much better the last Jedi would be if you knew mm -hmm. that Ray died in the end. <laughs> like you'd be that's I mean, it would save the whole thing. You'd be yeah, like, I don't know if it would save the whole thing, but it would go a long way to help and fix, <laughs> you know, help and fix it. Yeah. Yeah. She's, you, you want, you, she stands, she stands up and she says, my name is, and then an arrow, a flaming arrow hits her in the eye socket. <laughs> Look, you the want sand the, people are invading again. <laughs> you want, you want, uh, the, you want the last Star Wars movie to have the, uh, Sunset Boulevard, Carlito's Way opening? Yes. <laughs> it'd be great. See, that's what it should be. It should be Ray dying, okay? She's like, she just got hit with a laser bolt in the face. And it's like, yep, that's me. <laughs> You're probably wondering how I got here. Right, yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty amazing. Unquenched source through which society is born. He is an eternal man perfected, unspecific, universal man. He has been reborn. Campbell argues that we can take a specific person, whether it's an ancient myth or a modern hero, pull them out of their time and place, and voila, they are all the same. And on the one hand, you can- Well, okay, wait. He doesn't say they're all the same. Okay, he yeah. says that they all follow a journey that has a lot of similarities in it. And that, see, because, and here's why this is weird to me. Yeah, that's- If a... you can look at- thousands and thousands of thousands of years of human society and see that humans are telling the same story again and again and again that tells you something useful about human nature doesn't it hell yeah it does yeah it also tells you why people are interested in story to begin with right yeah i mean he brings it up the the character arc is an essential part of the storytelling because that's the the journey that changes you Right. Well, so, but, you know, but, I wonder. But like she completely mis misspoke what's actually being said there. The, mm -hmm. the They don't go on the same journey. They go on a journey that has, that results in some sort of change. That mm -hmm. changes them in some way. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and also usually they're sort of fighting, you know, one of the things he also talks about is like, they exist in a culture that has a problem or stagnation or something and they have to you know seek some sort of new information or new way of doing something a new source of power you know they have to kind of defy convention new equilibrium yeah yes in order to fix whatever the problem is so there you go heroes are heroes are uh, traditionally left-wing guys i hate to tell you this she should love that <laughs> no, but you know i wonder anything about it till just now maybe the reason that she has such a problem with this is because you know, since the leftists want to push so much that everything is culture and everyone's kind of a blank slate, if you have reoccurring themes that exist in stories and, and reoccurring journeys that exist in stories for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, that completely destroys the notion that it, that's a cultural phenomenon. This would have to be a biological phenomenon. Hmm. I mean, wouldn't it? If humans, If humans are basically telling the same stories and going on the same journeys for thousands and thousands of years, it must mean that there's some inherent quality to these stories that resonate with us about something on a biological level. Well, I mean, I think it's about biological organisms adapting to their environment. I think that is the overarching similarity. Sure. Because like you said, something's come to change, some change has befell the environment. Right. And you need to adapt, adapt to that change. Yes. Like all right. stories are about adaption. Like the whole idea that there's a character arc is saying this, something is wrong with this character right now and they need to adapt 
to survive, to thrive even. So, yes, but that's what makes every story different is the, the adaptability thing is what changes. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the, the thing that stays the same is you're adapting to some new circumstance or situation. That's what's universal. Right, right. Mm -hmm.